Is living in the San Fernando Valley boring? Are you thinking about moving to Los Angeles? As a Brit living in LA, I made the choice to become an Angelino 10 years ago. In this video, I'm going to discuss living in the 818. 818 is an area code and sometimes condescending synonym for the valley, which is seen by some as being a suburban nightmare. This channel is all about living in Los Angeles. So if you're interested in learning more about what LA has to offer, then this is the channel for you. If you want to know everything about eating, working, playing, the good and the bad of living in Los Angeles, then subscribe to this channel and tap the little bell for notifications so you can be the first to know about the current happenings and the market here in LA. My name is Ange Coley Catalano and I am with Crafts and Bauer. I get calls, texts and emails every day from people just like you looking for help on making their move to LA and asking how I did it. Whether you're moving in six days or six months, Give me a call, shoot me a text, or drop me an email so I can help make your move to California smooth. If you mention the valley to someone who lives in LA, they might list off all the reasons why it's a suburban nightmare. There's nothing to do there, it's too hot. I'll talk about how it's full of porn studios. Now, as a non-LA native, when I first arrived here, I wanted to be in the midst of the action, to go out, to experience the city, living in bars and restaurants, and have the whole LA experience. So I lived in West Hollywood on the Beverly Hills border and I loved it. I had everything on my fingertips and most things were walking distance away. The West Side is so much fun. Skip to seven years later, I got married, had a baby, and even though I think I'm still 25, suddenly space became really important to me. I fought my husband for a solid two years as I had nightmares about becoming a suburban mom who was boring. Unfortunately, I didn't have three to four million dollars to stay where I was and upgrade from my condo to my first house. So after being bombarded with images of gorgeous houses on TV, as every reality star seems to be moving to the valley, I decided to give it a go. I've spent the last two years living in Sherman Oaks and I'm shocked to say that I really like living here. The west side is great, but living on this side of the hill for me feels like the best of both worlds. There are not as many museums and tourist attractions, but the valley does have its own history and hole in the wall institutions that they take great pride in and a low key appeal that differs from the Hollywood lights. Still not convinced? Let's take a further look at the reasons for living here. Number one, the parking. There's plenty of it and it's mostly free. Need I say more? I've always loved the feeling of parking right outside the store that you want to go to. It's the lazy girl in me. In West Hollywood or Santa Monica, which are amongst the more prominent shopping areas, it's normal to find parking sign upon parking sign, which are seemingly there for the sole purpose of confusing you. Angelinos are all too familiar with having to drive around doing laps to find a space. In the valley, you're somewhat spoiled by parking. And if it takes longer than a minute to walk, people here are likely to complain about how far they had to park. Number two, the traffic isn't as bad. The main shopping area and dining area that runs through the entire valley is Ventura Boulevard. At 18 miles, it's the world's longest avenue of mom and pop businesses and a great reason for those with their eye on LA come and explore. Now Ventura can get congested at rush hour, just like any other place, but it's nothing like driving around Hollywood Boulevard or the Grove at rush hour, which are packed. Number three, oh my gosh, the valley is huge. There's a North Valley, a West Valley, and an East Valley. I'm mostly talking in this video about my experience in the south of the valley. Let's call it Studio City, Sherman Oaks, and Encino. However, the valley spans around 290 miles. And if you're living just east or west of the 405, the traffic can resemble typical LA traffic. The North Valley is far enough from the city, making it ideal for those that are happy being in the heart of the suburbs. The East is Burbank, North Hollywood and Glendale, which all have great transport links to downtown. The West of the Valley has been made famous by shows such as the Kardashians and is famous for its huge lots and enormous backyards. For those of you who, like me, still like to go out, you will probably want to live in Sherman Oaks, Studio City or Encino because they are all about 20 minutes drive north of West Hollywood and Beverly Hills. This drive is known by locals as going over the hill. There isn't actually one hill. There are numerous canyons along Ventura that will take you through the Hollywood Hills to the west side. Four, the sushi. Sushi is a major food group in Los Angeles and it has been for decades. It's where the California roll was born 
where Nobu made his name and where supermarket sushi got its start. There are a ton of Japanese restaurants on Ventura Boulevard between Calabasas and Studio City. From hole-in-the-wall spots on a strip mall to Michelin-starred restaurants such as Asanebo on the area's acclaimed Sushi Row. Number five, the valley is more affordable. Now that's because homes to purchase and homes to rent are cheaper here. The average rent on a one-bedroom apartment in Sherman Oaks in 2022 is $2,300. You can certainly find cheaper places in other parts of the valley, but here in Sherman Oaks, prices are significantly cheaper than Hollywood or the West Side. When you're deciding where to live in LA, it's all about proximity to work, to the freeway, to your go-to spots. And some of LA's best cities for commuters are Sherman Oaks, Studio City, North Hollywood and Burbank. Now, this is because they're close enough to the action while still giving you more space for your money. Number six, contrary to what most people say, there's a lot to see and do in the valley. Granted, the valley doesn't have the same tourist attractions as the city, besides the studio tours at Warner Brothers or Universal. But that doesn't mean you can't have any fun here. The NoHo Arts District is home to several theatres, art galleries and recording studios. Foodies can rest assured that there are plenty of restaurant options and whilst most don't look much on the outside, there are some fabulous dining options here. And during my time in the valley, I am seeing more and more city hotspots that are opening branches here. Oh, and for the pub enthusiasts, there are several options to watch the soccer or football, whatever you choose to call it. I don't want to feed into the suburban mall stereotype, but there are two Westfields here, plus shops all along Ventura Boulevard, as well as big retail parks in Woodland Hills and Burbank. At the weekend, you can get yourself down to the many farmers markets for food, antiques, handmade clothing or jewelry. Number seven, it's chill and diverse. Yes, LA overall is known for its chill vibe. And after first coming here from London, I was shocked that all bars and restaurants seem to close at 2 a.m. Being that the valley is the suburbs, it's practically dead after 10. So if you like going out late at night, then there are probably only a handful of spots to go to. The valley doesn't necessarily have a style that represents the demographic as a whole, such as areas like Los Feliz and Beverly Hills do. The valley is its own entity. It's diverse overall, but not overtly representative of any one culture or style. Number eight, celebrities. It's been said that the real Hollywood is in the valley. Now, I'll be honest, tour buses bypass the area. Nobody would dream of holding the Oscars here, but what the San Fernando Valley lacks in zip code cachet, it makes up for in sheer numbers of on-screen personalities. Industry insiders estimate that the valley is home to more actors than any place else. And that's probably because it's also the address of Universal, Warner Brothers, Disney, NBC, CBS and Nickelodeon. There are several A-list celebrities living here and also an abundance of B-listers and behind the scenes industry professionals, which adds a luster to the 818. So why is there so much snobbery about the Valley? Well, it's existed since Hollywood's beginnings when movie makers flocked to the open spaces to build studios and the quintessential dumb LA bimbo became known as the Valley Girl. Now, after spending the last two years here and being stuck here during the pandemic, I realise that it's largely people on the west side that slam the valley and see it as being provincial, unsophisticated, uncultured and suburban. Whilst it's true that the valley does lack the nightlife of the west side, I realise now that any other negative opinion that myself and other people have about the valley is probably an outdated one and it's probably held by somebody who hasn't spent that much time here. The Valley is a microcosm of Los Angeles proper. It has a wealthy side, a middle class side, and a lower income side. And there are many different cultural backgrounds and ethnicities here. There are myriads of restaurants and shopping and dining options. There are universities and colleges and great schools. You have easy access to the mountains and beaches. As time goes on, you can find more and more in the valley that you can find on the west side. And for the rest, it's just over the hill.